Amen, amen. God bless you, family. God, what an amazing day. Amazing day outside, amazing day in the studio, amazing day in your life, an amazing day in my life. Why? Because it's a new day, new start, new chance, new reality, new greatness, new, new time, new time to be sunshine. Amen. Let a light shine. Let our light so shine that the world would know that we love Jesus. Amen. This is Friday. A lot of people say Friday, but this is Friday. Amen. And I try to encourage you every Friday to move forward in victory, to move forward in financial blessing, to move forward in your health, to move forward in things that God has for us. And today uh, I'm going to talk about God's laws. His laws, L-A-W-S, are more valuable than material wealth. Than dinero, mula, right? It's more valuable than material wealth. Houses, cars, boats, yachts. God's laws are more valuable than all of that. And I'm going to prove it in his word. Amen. And you know for sure that if you're a multi-billionaire right now and you're listening, why don't you sow into the ministry of your multi-billionaire? You can sow into the ministry. Amen. But if you're watching, you're listening, you know for sure that no matter what, no matter how many possessions you have, when you fall ill, when you end up in the hospital, you'll be like, they'll check the same vitals of you than they would check on me. That I'm not a multi-millionaire billionaire. So then all of a sudden, all the riches and all the material wealth that you've ever earned, that you ever have, that you ever possessed, won't matter as much then. Because money is goes as far as money can go, right? Wealth goes as far as wealth can take you. But God's laws are supernatural. So you get either a natural material increase here on this earth, or do you want a supernatural increase on this earth? Amen? I choose the supernatural. And I know some people will say, well, you could keep your supernatural. I'll keep the natural. I'll keep the planes, the yachts, the boats, the money, um, the woman, the men. I'll keep it all. You can have that. Amen. Um, this morning, Devo is basically going to challenge that way of thinking because God's laws are more valuable than material wealth. It's in his word, man. So I'm just going to repeat what the word says. Let me just say some good mornings over here. Good morning. I'm um, Brother Damien. God bless you. Good morning to the morning, Devo, my friend and my bro. Sister Lissette, it's good to see you. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, Friday is Friday. A lot of people say Friday. Yes. So the weekends are changed, but we still are, are getting into the weekend. Uh, praise God, Michael Jakes. God bless you. Thank you for coming through to the morning, Devo. And here's the update. Aniva is doing well from the heart surgery and wants to go home. Praise God. Uh, that's a good sign. Amen. Thank you. Aniva is the person we prayed for, uh, for the heart surgery. And this is the update. Thank you so much, Lisette, for updating us so, so we can know our prayers are being heard by God. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that makes my day um, a day forward for Neva, right? A day moving forward. God's laws are more valuable than material wealth. What is that all about? Well, we're going to find that out real quick. Let me set up my phone real quick so that way I could have um, this going uh, for share. So we got to share. Sharing is caring, right? So let's share this as many ways as we can. If you know somebody right now that's not on social media, it's all good. They could go straight to the website, soulwinnerswithaz.org, and they could share, or they could listen, or they could comment, or they could get involved right from the website, right from the website. So it's all good. I'm trying to cover all the bases here. And if you not have subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, it's DJ Sam Rock, DJ S-A-M, like Mary, R-O-C-K. That's how you look up on my YouTube channel. Amen. And subscribe there because I got some surprises coming soon on the YouTube channel. So more valuable than. That's the name of this morning, Devo. Uh, and also the caption that I put on there is, we worship what we cherish. Let's be honest. We will worship what we cherish. We will worship what we value the most. That's just the way human nature is. We will worship or we will value. Uh, we will value whatever we value the most. We will worship. We will serve that thing. That thing will be our master. That person will be our master if we cherish. I've, I've heard testimonies, live testimonies of men of God saying, listen, I made my wife an idol. I made my wife an idol. Some I've heard men of God say that. So because I made my wife an idol, things fell apart. Amen. Because I didn't put God first in the marriage. I didn't put God first in the relationship. So it could happen to any one of us if we're not careful. 
Amen. But God is full of grace, mercy, right? Love. He's righteous. He's holy. He's just. So we have a God that knows and understands the way we think. But yet his ways are not like our ways and his thoughts are not like our thoughts. That's why we need to come up higher. This is a supernatural thing. You can't go to God um, and expect a, a natural thing. You go to God, you expect a supernatural thing to happen. Supernatural words, supernatural increase, wealth and abundance, life in abundance, because God is a supernatural being. He's an eternal being. Amen. Superior to everyone, yet he comes down and makes himself available by way of his spirit, right? Um, available to us. And he works out of love. A lot of people, you know, toss the word love around. Like, well, I love um, my cat. I love my dog. I love you. I love my, my wife. I love my husband. Okay, that's great. But what is love? What's the definition of love? Amen. And we'll talk about that real quick. And then I'll pray. If you have any questions, comments, prayer requests, or anything like that, let me know on the live chat. Sister Carmen, God bless you. It's good to see you. Um, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, leave them on the live chat and we'll take care of that ASAP. Amen. But love, can you imagine um, the definition of love that the world has and how God says to love? I always think of love like a triangle, right? Triangle. On the very top, we have the lover, right? And on this side, you have the loved one, right? So the lover, the loved one. And on the other side, you have the spirit of love. You only find out in the Trinity of you only find out in the Trinity of God, in the Godheads. We don't serve three gods. We don't worship three gods. We worship one God, three people, one essence. The lover, the loved one, which is the Son, and the Spirit of Love, which Holy Spirit God. Amen. We worship that way. So whatever I cherish, I will worship. And whatever you cherish, you will worship. And we have three. In one, amen. The one who loves me, then the beloved son who saved me, and then the spirit of love that's in me. Amen. I'll take it. That's the definition of biblical love right there. That's the Trinity right there. Amen. So I don't know why I went there, but that's for somebody. That's a little nugget. That's a little free bonus right there for you to, to see and to realize for yourself. Amen. Amen. Sister Set says so many different ways to love. Yes, yes, there is. <clears throat> but there's only one lover, one loved one, and one Holy Spirit that loves, the spirit of love. Amen. We have it all as believers. That's an amazing thing. That's why God's laws, his love, his laws are more valuable than material wealth. More valuable than material wealth. So let's pray and then we'll share this. I'll give everybody a minute to share this with as many people as we can. Let me um, cheat real quick and share this to my story real fast and get it ready to share to my page. So that way, because um, that minute always beats me down. So that minute I'll, I'll be as fast as I can with my sharing. So, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for a new day. I thank you for a new start. I thank you for a new word. I thank you for your revelation. I thank you for your power, your love, your grace and your mercy in our lives. I pray a hedge of protection over every single person that's watching, every single person that's listening in the name of Jesus. I speak life and I speak prosperity. I speak financial breakthrough in Jesus' name. I come against the curse of iniquity, the curse of rebellion. I come against the curse of poverty in the name of Jesus over every single person that's watching from the sound of my voice. From the, from the video, from wherever you're watching, wherever you're streaming, wherever you're connecting, I pray peace be still and know that he is God, that Jesus is Lord over your life. I pray against anything that brings death or consequences of death into our life, and I speak life in Jesus' name. And we move forward in victory knowing that you are able and willing to do what your word says your word can do in our lives. So I thank you for this day. I thank you for this moment. I thank you for everybody that's connected and everybody who will connect later on. I pray a blessing and I speak a blessing over all their lives. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. Let's take a minute to share this out. When we come back, we'll dive into this whole idea of God's laws being more valuable than material wealth. I'll be right back.
Okay, we tried our best. That minute comes and goes real fast. So in Psalm chapter 119, Psalm chapter 119 in the Old Testament, the Bible says, um, first of all, Psalm 119, this is just a bonus a nugget. Psalm 119 is the longest of all the 150 Psalms. So the book of Psalms is the biggest book in the Bible, and Psalm 119 is the longest of all the Psalms. It's an amazing chapter, an amazing book. And it declares the greatness of God's laws and the greatness of God's law, period. So it has commandments, has poetry, has prescriptions, prohibitions, regulations, right? But the whole of God's revelation in the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible as we have it, right? We read it as we have it. The first five books is the Torah. And these commandments show him who God is. So the psalmist is writing in Psalm 119, and God is showing himself to the psalmist, letting the psalmist know, I'm the one that you're looking for. I'm the one that has all prosperity. I'm the one who has all blessings. I'm the one who is all powerful, almighty. So the psalmist is being amazed by what the inspiration of God is allowing him to write in the scripture. So God is showing himself to the psalmist. He's showing him who he is. Amen. And he's showing this person what he wants this person to do. So God is always letting us know what he wants us to do. So we go around saying, we're asking people, I don't know what God's will is for my life. Do you know what God's will is for my life? And you're asking everybody. You're asking a, a question about God and you're asking a person. Listen, I'd rather ask God the question and then let people help me, you know, you know realize the answer. If that makes any sense. So the whole of God's revelation in uh, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, as we have it, are showing who God is, what God wants, and what he wants us to do with the information that he gave us. They give him wisdom and teach him the right way of life. That's valuable advice. Therefore, the psalmist sings. The psalmist sings. He says, in Psalm 119, 14, Psalm 119, 14 says, In the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. I'm going to say that again. In the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. The word of God will make you happy, silly happy. The word of God will make you rich. The word of God will make you elevate. The word of God will make you prosper, more valuable than any course you could take in school. I'm not, I'm not against education. I'm not against college. I'm not against trainings and courses or, or anything like that. But God's word will elevate you even further than that. And guess how much you paid for it? Zero. It's free. God's word is available to every single person that's listening, that's watching. Every single person you know. Every single person that I know. His word is available free. And his word and his law is more valuable than material wealth. More valuable than material wealth. The psalmist says, listen, this word is making me happier than all the riches. And since he's, since he's comparing the word of God to the riches, I'm believing maybe he was rich. Or maybe he was wealthy. In the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. God's word is precious. God's word is valuable, more valuable. God's word is amazing. It's alive. Therefore, we should cherish the word. We shouldn't cherish anything else as much as we cherish the word. I cherish my wife. I cherish my life. I cherish my children. I cherish my family, right? And you should too. And that's, it's all good. But I have a proper place to cherish all those things. I cherish God first. That's just me. That's my decision. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I decided to do. Amen. And since I put God in his right place, even though he, he can't come down from his right place, but people try to dodge or try to bypass God, try to bypass the God's law, tries to bypass God through Jesus, tries to bypass Jesus entirely. And they want to live a life in order. And that right there is out of order if we don't have God first in our lives. So I cherish right on, on what I worship. We worship what we cherish, I should say. And I worship God. So I cherish God. He's my treasure. His word has more treasure. I've, I've found more treasure in the word of God than I will ever find 
seeking wealth in this world. I'm telling you. And I do a lot of stuff online. I do a lot of online businesses and I get increased um, most of the time. But the most increase I ever find in my life is in the word of God. Because everything here is natural, right? We're, we're, we're natural human beings, but we need a supernatural experience. And we have the supernatural one living inside of us if we're believers. So we win in all cases, all situations. We, know, we don't really lose. Amen? We always win if we follow the Holy God that's in us, Holy Spirit God. So God's word is precious. Therefore, we should cherish that word, his word. We should read it, and it's free. I got it on my tablet. I got like ten. Like I'm a Bible man. You look, you look where all my Bibles are. You be like, oh, how many Bibles are you reading? I just like different versions. I like different translations. I have a, I have a Jewish Bible. I have study Bibles. I have all kind of Bibles because I love I love to see what the Word says in different ways. As long as it's lined up with the Word. Like as usual, no craziness. I, I I attempted to buy what they were calling the street Bible, and it was so ridiculously raunchy. It was really taking the word of God way out of context, and it was he, he put it put he, I think it was called the Ebonics Bible, and it was just too. It was off the charts. Uh, I don't use it. I have it somewhere. I, I don't know if I threw it out, but uh, yeah, they even had a street Bible like so. Yo, what's good? Well, blah, 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 you know, how, you know, how that type of way of, of communicating, they try to put that in the word of God. And I don't think it worked, in my opinion. So the Bible should be cherished. We should read it, study it and let it sink in. Let the word of God sink in. Let the word of God marinate, because the more of God's word you put into yourself, the more it will come out of your mouth. The more of God's word you put in your heart. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will what? Your mouth will speak. If we speak prosperity, if we speak health, if we speak victory, if we speak love, if we speak elevation, if we speak revelation, if we speak word, trust me, your life is going to transform. Your life is going to change. You're going to be amazed at even what you're saying. You're going to be amazed at even what you're doing because you're speaking the word. You're repeating what God said. And whatever God says is right, is true, is powerful and living. Amen. You're welcome, Sister Lissette, for the word of God. The Bible is not always easy to understand, and I understand that. Anybody can tell you the Bible sometimes is not easy to understand. Because, listen, we're talking about or we're reading about a supernatural being. We're, we're talking about God Almighty, Yahweh, Jehovah, right? We're talking about Yeshua HaMashiach. We're talking about God himself, Holy Spirit God. We're talking about the one, the creator of all that we see and all that we don't see. Creator of all life, creator of all things that are alive. Which so it's God's the subject of God, the person of God is so big that don't beat yourself in the head if you don't understand everything you read in the scripture. Allow Holy Spirit God that promises us to lead us into all truth, that promises us to remind us of God's word, that promises us to testify that Jesus is God, that promises us, He promises us that He would teach us. In time. Because imagine God gives us the whole revelation of everything that's going to happen and we all get it. I think we'll go bonkers knowing exactly how everything's going to pan out. I think that would drive me crazy. It won't help me. I think it will hurt me. Amen. So whether you praise God or you curse God because people curse God. Listen, praising God doesn't help God. Praising God helps me. Cursing God doesn't hurt God. Cursing God will hurt me. So i rather be at peace with God because of the peace of God. I have peace with God because of Jesus saving me. Now I have the peace of God living inside of me. That's worth more than any material blessing. That's worth more than a million dollars in my bank account. The peace of God. Are you kidding me? I'd rather have peace in this life than be a millionaire and be, you know, in chaos. Not knowing who's who to trust, not knowing where to go. Not, no, no, no. I, I don't I don't want that. I want peace. Peace is more valuable. The peace of God is more valuable than anything that this world could ever offer us. So God's word is precious. And the Bible is not always easy to understand. Some of its commandments, think about this, some of the Bible's commandments might be difficult for us to obey. Can I get a witness? Can I can I get somebody honest enough to be like, yeah, that's right. You know, I, I can't keep all the commandments. 
Uh, I'm going to dare to say you can't either. Holy Spirit God in us can. Because Holy Spirit God is God in us. And he never broke any of the commandments. He made the commandments. He applied the commandments. Amen. And he never broke any of them. He never failed. Right. Any of the commandments. I have. You have. We broke the commandments. Of God. And guess what? People who don't believe you kind of like off the hook. You don't believe in God. So how would you know that uh, about God's commandments? But God gave us all something. He gave us all uh, a, a yearning for eternity. Right. He wrote his law on our hearts. So we know inherently we know what's right and what's wrong. We just know it. It's a given. God gave it to us. We have this thing. It's called the knower. I call it the knower. We know when we're doing wrong and we know when we're doing right. So if we know that, that means wrong and right is outside of us. Let me explain. If somebody comes up to you and say, oh, you know, uh, we don't need God to be have a moral life. We don't need God to know what's right and what's wrong. OK. And then I would ask the question. So who says? How do you know what's right and wrong? And then I could just say, give me your phone and grab somebody's phone and be like, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm doing what I want to do. There's no right. There's no wrong. There's no God. So me taking your phone is not wrong. Oh, give me my phone back. Stop playing. Blah, blah, blah. Well, why do you think something is wrong if there's nobody outside of us telling us what's right and what's wrong? Oh, no, it's all evolution. It's all inside of us. We Society, we know, you know, we know what's right. And we it depends on the society. Well, how about if the whole society is me? I'm the society and I'm taking your phone. I'm stealing from you. I'm stealing from your mom. Am I right? Because I'm society. And the person, if they're honest, they have to say no. That argument doesn't work. That argument is phony. It's false. Listen, there's one truth. There's one way and there's one life. His name is Jesus. He said it. And don't get mad at me, John 14, 6. You could deal with that scripture yourself, whether or not you believe or not. And that right there is worth more than any material wealth. The word of God, the commandments, the God's word, his law. Sometimes we want to skip through verses. I've done it before. I, 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 I'm not admit, I, so I don't understand this. Let me keep on reading. I don't understand that scripture. I don't camp out at what I don't understand. But sometimes what we don't understand is where we need to come camp out sometimes it's what we don't understand is where god wants us to prosper at sometimes it's what we don't understand is where we will get the financial blessing the health the strength the protection right sometimes that's where god wants us amen so it says that god and peace are the best two for me amen yes why are we here if not because of god amen a lot of people will ask that amen that's a good question Amen. And I believe Lisette knows why she's here. Amen. There's four questions all of us really ask, whether you, you are Christian or not. We ask, what's our origin? Like, where did we come from? Now that we know where we came from, what's the meaning about it? Okay, I know I came from my parents. Now, what does that mean? <clears throat> and by the way, every single child that's been born on this planet has been different from the person they were birthed from. Like, when my, when, when my mom had me and her belly... Hello, uh, I was a different person living inside of my mom. Hint, hint, Holy Spirit is a different person living inside of a believer. We're born again. We're not born um, just like no more. We're born again. So we have the question of origin. Where do we all come from? Now that you know where you came from, some people choose to believe that we're, we just poofed in the air. We were circumstance, chance. Like we were part of a big, uh, big bang and we just so happened to come together and be who we are. Some people made that choice to believe that. I don't have enough faith to believe in all of that. But I believe I came from my parents. I was birthed from my mom. Now, what does that mean? What did it mean now that I know I was a, a male? What does it mean now that I know I was going to grow up in this world? Meaning then you come to morality. OK, I'm living in this life. What's right and what's wrong? What direction should I travel? We all ask these questions and then we want to know where do we go after we die? Those four questions. And Lisette brought up a good one. This is a, a reply to people. I believe that she's saying, and why are we here if it's not because of God? People don't want to hear that. 
A lot of people don't want to hear that question because it challenges people. I know it challenged me before I was a believer. I said, yeah, why am I here? If there's no God, am I here just by chance? Well, my cousin's a bunch of apes, right? And monkeys. Did I come from an ape? You know what I mean? It had me think. I was like, that don't make no sense. I, I would look back and back and back. I know we're dark skinned in my family and all that. And we have maybe features of, you know, animals. But I ain't part of no ape, planet of the apes or nothing like that. I watched it on TV when I was a kid. And I saw it in the movies when I was an adult. I ain't from the planet of the apes. As a matter of fact, that movie even proves that apes and humans were different. <laughs> but anyway, the Bible is not always easy to understand. And I'll be the first one to admit that. Amen. But I rely on Holy Spirit God in me to teach me the word as well. The Bible is God's revelation to us. We didn't create God. God created us. We didn't, you know, the Bible wasn't created by man. Holy Spirit inspired man to write the Bible. Right? The Bible didn't create the resurrection of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection created the Bible. So sometimes we have things twisted. You want faith. You want life. You want hope. You want prosperity. Um, boom. And I got rabbits right outside of the window of the studio. And they always come around when I do these morning devos now. It's a new thing. It's crazy. The Bible is God's revelation to us. And we need to obey him. Now, you could, you could make the choice of not obeying God. And please let me know how that's working out for you. Disobedience against God, against the Lord, against, you know, against even your own conscience. Sometimes you disobey it. You just do what the flesh wants you to do. You do what everybody's doing with whoever you want to do it with, whatever time you want to do it. And you keep on going. Get all you can, can all you get and keep moving that way. Let me know how that was how it's working out for you. You might have a good season, a good time for a little bit. But when that season is over all those decisions you made that were against God, that was against God's commandments, that was against your own prosperity, that were against your own health. Um, I'm sorry to tell you, but those consequences are coming and God won't hold back those consequences. Decisions we make are based on what we want to do. Amen. Whatever you want to do the most, you will do whatever you cherish the most. You will worship. We worship what we cherish. If we cherish money, girls, cars, whatever, then that's what we're going to worship and that's how we're going to live. And unfortunately, a lot of people die that way. Listen, I speak life, but a lot of people are not going to receive it. And I understand that. I understand that. That's that's some of the scriptures that I don't really um, understand is how people reject Jesus. That God says and promises that people will go through trials and tribulations on this earth. And people will disobey him people will deny jesus now that i'm on this side of eternity that now i'm on a born again believer i don't understand why i was rejecting him before i had my reasons but those reasons actually were excuses because I, I wasn't looking for truth i was looking for happiness before jesus amen amazing seeing a rabbit in your backyard it's love and sent from god amen yes and it's like they're coming more and more Every time I do it, and it's at this time when I'm doing this morning Devo. First, I had the birds early in the week coming, and there was a whole flock of them on my roof. It sounded so much so that it sounded like they were in the room with me. Now I have to, now the, the rabbits. <laughs> it's crazy. But now the Bible is God's revelation to us, and we need to obey him. Only, check this out, only if we submit to him wholeheartedly, right, we will learn to assess the word of God and its value. Do you cherish God's commandments or not? I mean, let's be honest. If you don't, you know, evaluate that. Let me know how that's working out for you. He said, nah, I don't need the word of God. I, I'm good on my own. Yeah, I used to think that way. I used to, I used to move that way. Trust me, I'm telling you, I know. I'm telling you, I know. I used to be the same way. Oh, I don't need God because I got this. And that whatever that this was, it was so temporary that when the thing ran out, whatever that thing was that ran out, Whatever that, whoever that person was that ran out on me, uh, whoever, you know, that time of pleasure that I had with so-and-so, whatever, that's all temporary. Now I have God in me. Listen, that's eternity. Psalm 119 verses, uh, well, it's a whole, I don't, don't, I don't think I'm going to read the whole thing. Yeah, I'm going to start from 125, Psalm 119, verse 125, and we're going to go to 136. Get ready. Like 11 verses here. I am your servant. Give me understanding, the ability to learn, and a teachable heart. 
I, this you could use this as a prayer. You could use this as a way to ask God. Let him know you're his servant. Give me understanding, the ability to learn, and give me a teachable heart. A teachable heart makes you available to everything that God has for you. That I may know your testimonies. It is time for the Lord to act. They have broken your law. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold. Yes, more than refined gold. The psalmist is letting us know that, listen, I don't care about the money, the gold, all that. I want the word and I want to live right. That's more valuable than material wealth. Verse 127. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold. Yes, more than refined gold. Therefore, I esteem as right all your precepts concerning everything I hate every false way. Your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. Amen. You got to get the good stuff out of here. Therefore, the unfolding of your glorious words give light. Their unfolding gives understanding to the simple. To the people who are like childlike, like me. They will give understanding to the simple. I opened my mouth and panted with anticipation because I longed for your commandments. Verse 132. Turn to me and be gracious to me and show me favor as if as is your way to do to those who love your name. Turn to me. A look from the Lord is worth more than any material wealth. Just forgot to glance my way. Would change everything. Turn to me and be gracious to me and show me favor as is your way to those who love your name. What is God's name? Jesus, Yahweh, right? El Shalom, El Shaddai, right? Uh, so he has so many names. Anointed Son of God, Amen. The Last Adam, Yeshua Hamashiach, Amen. Yeshua, he has a lot of names. El Shaddai, I already said that. You know, he has many names. Establish my footsteps in the way of your word. Do not let any human weakness have power over me. This is the psalmist. In the Old Testament, talking about and asking God, do not let any human weakness have power over me. Already, he was already having that battle with the flesh. This is not nothing new. We're all having this battle, causing me to be separated from you. What separates us from God? Oh, you know, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're separate. No, what separates us from God is our own evil, sinful desire, the flesh, um, the world. The devil, right? The pride of life, the lust of the eyes, that those things separate us from God. Do not let any human weakness have power over me, causing me to be separated from you. Verse 134, we're in Psalm 119. The longest psalm and the biggest book of the Bible. Make your face shine with pleasure upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes weep. Streams of water because people do not keep your law. He's going through it. The psalmist is like, listen, I'm going through it. This is crazy. People are breaking your law. They don't keep your law. But don't they know who you are? Don't they know that you could teach them? Don't, don't they know that you could prosper them? Don't they know that you can elevate them, bless them, keep them, help them? Yeah, God could do all of that. But it's our choice. It's so our choice. Um, to get in his word or not. Sister Joyce, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Psalm 119, the longest uh, of the, the longest chapter of the biggest book in the Bible. It's an amazing chapter. Psalm 119. Uh, some theologians say that this has the whole of the Bible in it. Like the whole gospel, everything, you could find elements in Psalm 119. It's all good. <laughs> I believe it. God can do whatever he wants to do. And he will show us what he wants us to know. He shows us what he wants us to see. Amen. The hidden things of God belong to God. He doesn't have to reveal anything. God doesn't owe me and any explanation. Amen. But yet he allowed me to see who he is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amazing, amazing God. So, more than, that was the name of this morning Devo, right? More valuable than. What is more valuable than God's commandments? 
Um, somebody on my uh, follow me on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. I caved in finally. Uh, I just want to reach more people with the gospel, and I already started trouble on my account. Um, I'm on TikTok at Bro Sam Rock B R O S A M R O C K, and of course I just you know being me, um, preaching gospel started trouble, and um, some people were saying, oh you know Jesus is not God, he's the Son of God, and my reply was, well God is good, right? And if God is good, can you name anybody else besides Jesus who is good? It's been crickets. No one has answered that. Jesus is the son of God. Yes, he's the only begotten son of God. And he is God in the flesh. And he is good. And by biblical definition, when we say good as a Christian, we're talking about God. Because we realize not one of us by ourselves without God in us are good. Jesus was the only one who was good in the scriptures. and all the scriptures, he's good. So therefore, he's God biblically. Amen. And because that's why we say God is good. Amen. Because nobody else is. Amen. That's just the way God keeps me there. He keeps me there. He puts peace in my heart because of that and all that. Anyway, that was for somebody. I don't know who that was for. But that's what we have. What does the Bible say about riches, wealth, wellness, health? That's what we're going to be doing every Friday. Amen. Lord willing going forward. So that way we could get the victory. We could come together and realize some things that we probably haven't seen or probably haven't realized in a lot of years. Amen. In a lot of years. Um, Sister Lissette says, uh, my eight-year-old daughter is going to follow you in TikTok. Oh, amen. Amen. Um, praise the Lord. I hope she'll have fun watching um, the old man on the screen. Amen. It's at Bro Sam Rock. At Bro Sam Rock. Amen. That'll be a blessing. Amen. Maybe she could, maybe she could give me some ideas of how to reach her, her um, age group. Amen. And that's it. I'm blessed. I hope you are blessed. Amen. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope we could get together soon um, during the weekend, maybe, um, and do something online. Amen. Virtual. Um, the city and the town and the township and the states are starting to reopen. So be very careful. I already saw a situation yesterday. I was getting some oil for my car. The oil that usually costs like seven dollars a quart of oil is now thirteen something. The world is changing. This is it. I gave the man ten dollars because I, I'm used to paying seven eight dollars for a, a, a thing of oil, and he was like, "Uh, oh, thirteen something." I was like, "Okay, things are changing." But I already saw yesterday. Um, everybody had masks. It says on the front door. You know, you're not going to be served. You don't have a mask. And this guy comes in looking at everybody all tough without no mask. So everybody looked at him and he already wanted somebody to approach. You could tell. And it was going to probably be like, oh, I'm vaccinated, so I don't have to wear it. So country's opening up. It's going to be more. Hopefully there will be no more division. But I see some situations already in my mind that's going to happen. People are going to have masks on and other people are not going to have masks on because they're going to say they're vaccinated and it's going to cause problems on lines, uh, busy, busy amusement parks and all that stuff. It's going to cause problems. But I come against any chaos <clears throat> in your life and over my life and I pray protection over us that God will give us strength, health and protection every single day of our lives. So God bless you all. God keep you all. Remember always that God is good. You're welcome, Sister Lisa. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed weekend. Um, amen. I, I'm so glad you were blessed, set, and we can move forward in victory going forward. Amen. Today and in the days to come. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. Peace.